Today we'll be looking at how to make a wicking bed. These are wicking beds that the students made earlier this term. Um, they've made three wicking beds and we've made them out of intermediate bulk containers or IBCs. Now, if you did decide to use an IBC as we have, you must make sure that it's a food grade IBC and hasn't had any chemicals stored in it. Uh, essentially, a wicking bed works just the same way as a self-watering pot does in your home, so for an indoor pot. Um, we fill the bottom with water and the plants suck the water up through their roots. The IBC just gets filled through the pipe here um, and that makes a reservoir at the bottom. We have an outlet valve here so that if there did get to be too much water in the bottom of it and waterlogged the plants, the water would just seep out of that pipe. Um, and on this one, uh, we've got a rotation. So there we go, that's actually emptied some water out. There is a little bit too much in there at the moment. Okay, this is an IBC in its full form. This is a 1,000 litre tank. Uh, what we did was we cut it in half. So if you did want to use an IBC, you will need a grinder to cut both the metal and the plastic in half, but then you'll have two um, garden beds that you can use. Please make sure that it's an adult that's doing the grinding and not one of the children. Uh, I'll show you the finished product. And this is half of the IBC now turned into a garden bed. Before we get started, make sure that you've got all of the equipment that you'll need. You will need some crushed rock. We've got some scoria here that we're using for the bottom of the tank. You'll need some um, aggregate pipe. Uh, this is quite a large roll, but you only need about two meters for one wicking bed. We've got some irrigation feeding here that we'll use as the drainage. Okay, so we started like this. Uh, this has got about 10 to 15 centimetres of water in the bottom of it because of the rain. Rather than drain it out and start again, because we just have to refill it with water, we've actually put a layer of the scoria inside this tank. Now, you can't see it because it's covered with water, but trust me, there is a thin layer of rocks underneath this water. Then you get your aggregate pipe and you simply coil it around inside the garden bed and hope the, what is it? PVC pipe. PVC pipe in the top of it. Now, we'll situate that in the corner and I'm going to put a brick on it to hold it. Okay, so I've got the brick there and it's just holding the pipe in place where I need it to be. Now I'm going to get, go and get some more scoria and I'm going to cover the aggregate pipe with scoria and then remove the brick once it's, once it's all stable. This is the garden bed after we have added the extra scoria to it. I've also removed the brick. Um, the other thing that you have to do is get an outlet happening in the side at the top of the stone. You guys see that there? So that's that little bit of irrigation pipe um, that I have drilled a hole into the side of the IBC and siliconed that pipe in. That'll be our overflow to make sure that the plants don't get waterlogged. Right, once you've got your second layer of scoria in um, and all of the aggregate pipe is covered, you then need to put a layer of geotextile fabric. Now the geotextile fabric stops the soil from draining down through the rocks because the rocks is essentially your reservoir at the bottom. So I'm just spreading out the geotextile fabric and you need to cut it so that it covers the entire wicking bed. Right, so that'll do about there. I'm going to cut that off at that end and then I'm going to go and get some loads of soil and fill the rest of the IBC up with soil. And just like magic, it's full of soil and we've got some plants here that we're going to put into this garden bed. This is stevia, otherwise known as a sugar plant. You can eat the leaves and they taste like sugar. This one here, it's a, an edible Australian tucker bush. This is the Murnong. Now the Murnong um, was um, eaten widely by the Wurundjeri people where they eat the roots. So we'll plant this one on the corner here and we will um, leave room around it so that you can actually dig down and dig out the roots so we can try them. Um, this is Old Man Saltbush. This is another indigenous plant. Um, the leaves are supposed to be really, really salty and supposed to be very high in protein and antioxidants. The one that we're putting in the corner here is rhubarb. Um, I know that you guys know a little about rhubarb in that the leaves are quite poisonous so we won't eat the leaves um, 
but it's a it's a very very prolific growing plant and by putting it in here we should be able to harvest a lot of the rhubarb stems for use in the kitchen the final part of the process is to fill up the reservoir that we've created using the rocks in the bottom of the tank uh, to do that i've just placed the hose inside the pipe uh, the reservoir will fill up and once it has i'm going to give the plants a light sprinkling from the top to make sure that their roots get a little bit of moisture now that they've been planted into the big garden and that's it couldn't be easier if you'd like to make your own wicking beds at home you can actually use your existing garden beds and just change them into wicking beds really easy to do dig out the soil that's currently in there line it with some black plastic or thick plastic and then follow this video from start to finish. Uh, if you can't put in a drainage hole in the side, it's not really that big a worry. Um, lots of wicking beds that I have seen don't have drainage holes at all. We've only put them in to make sure that being inside plastic that it doesn't get waterlogged. That's it, wicking beds at Springside. So I'm just braving the freezing cold weather to show you guys what a wicking bed setup can look like at home. So I built these garden beds oh, a bit over a year ago and the reason why I wanted to do it was if we go away on summer holidays and things like that, I've worked hard to grow my veggies, I don't want them to die while I'm away or have someone else responsible for watering them. So wicking beds are really great for, um, you fill them up once a week or depend on how much rain, I haven't had to fill them up much this year because we've had so much rain already, um, but if it is, is a little bit drier you might be filling them up maybe once maybe once every two weeks um, and then they just run themselves and I've been getting some great produce so I'll give you a little tour right so this is my wicking bed that I've built so I've just made a wooden garden bed frame and then I lined it with black plastic to help to stop the water from leaking out and also to stop the wood from deteriorating um, you can see along the side here I've got some sad looking tomatoes so I'm about to pull them out I'm just waiting for the last ones to ripen up um, down here this is my overflow valve that I've made and then I've got oh there's my cat there's Billy causing trouble um, and then in here is where I fill up the water reserve okay yep how about Billy little pest um, and then I've used just a piece of the piping I don't know if you can see that to hold up my nets as well to kind of stop the bugs and things and my camp from getting in uh, and I've got the same thing from over here as well so my overflow valve and then the same sort of setup. This is just a bigger version of it. So wicking beds, pretty straightforward process. The design really works and can be applied to different shapes and sizes. Um, I've even seen people make them out of pots as well or like um, polystyrene boxes. So you, if you don't have a big established garden bed, you could try it on a smaller scale. Um, and it really does make your life in the garden that little bit easier. So give it a go. Bye.